Okay, uh, so next, uh, renewable energy sources is the solar power. So this is the outline of the solar power. First, is about the solar energy. So what is solar energy? And then the sites for solar power generation. And then we cover about the solar technologies, which are the solar thermal power generation and also the photovoltaic devices. And then we have the solar PV system designs and finally the environmental considerations. So we look on to the first one is the solar energy. Okay. Um, solar energy is the most important source of energy available to the earth and its inhabitant. So solar energy is radiant energy that is produced by the sun. Okay. And then the sun makes e energy in its inner core in a process called nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion. Okay. So this is the, the process of the nuclear fusion, uh, which is happened in the inner core of the sun. Okay. And then the process of fusion most commonly involved with the hydrogen isotopes combining to form a helium atom okay and also neutron with transformation of matter so this matter emitted as a radiant energy okay so the sun energy takes around you can see here okay takes around 8 minutes to travel the 93 million miles to the earth very short period okay so at speed of light which is three times 10 to power of 8 meter per second or 1.86 times uh, 10 to power of 5 miles per second so only small part of radiant energy which is the light that emits into the space reach the the earth but that is more than enough to supply all our energy needs. Okay? So therefore, it considered as a renewable energy source. So nowadays, people use solar energy to heat building and water and to generate the electricity. Okay. So energy radiated by the sun. So the energy radiated by the sun is around 7% ultraviolet light. Okay, and then we have 47% is the visible light and 46% is the infrared light. So its energy content at the distance of the earth from the sun is around 1.4 kilowatts per meter squared. And each year around 1,000 or 500 million terawatt hour of solar energy reach the earth. Okay. So not all this energy reach the surface of the earth, if you can see in this figure, okay. So shorter wavelength ultraviolet radiation will absorb in the atmosphere. And then longer wavelength energy which uh, will be absorbed by the water vapor and also carbon dioxide. And then dust particles scattered more radiation dispersing some of it back to the space and clouds okay you can see here clouds also reflect light back to the space okay so hence only around 47 percent of the energy which is 700 million terawatt hour actually reach the earth surface okay so global solar electricity generating capacity is tiny and according to the European Union estimates that less than 800 megawatt of install capacity in 1995 and between 1995 and end of 2003 is around 2600 megawatt and beginning of 2004 is 3400 megawatt okay then we go to the solar energy 
So solar energy can be used to generate the electricity. Uh, this can be achieved by exploiting the heat contained in the sun's radiation. Okay, electricity can be generated directly from the light using an electronic devices called a solar cell. So this one, eh? solar cell or the photovoltaic cell. So we can see here. So by using this solar cell, uh, uh, electricity can be produced by the solar energy. Okay, next is the sites for solar power generation. So, in principle, solar power can be generated anywhere on the earth, but some regions are better than others. First, uh, things that uh, important things that need to be to take into account is the places where the sun shines frequently and regularly are preferable to regions. The brighter the sun, okay, the brighter the sun light, the greater the output. And the more advantageous the economics of the generating power plant. Okay, and the solar power does not necessarily require large contig contiguous uh, areas of land in order to generate the electricity. Small panels can be made in small modular units, which can be incorporated into buildings so that power generation can share space used for other purposes. Okay. And distributed generation of this type has many advantages. Okay, next is the solar technology. So we have um, two types, huh? two types of the solar technology, which are the first one is the photovoltaic or solar cell. So this photovoltaic or solar cell is a solid state device like a transistor or microchip. And it uses the physical characteristics of a semiconductor such as silicon to turn the sunlight directly into electricity. Okay, so we'll go uh, after this one by one. Eh? More details on the photovoltaic, photovoltaic or solar cell and also so solar thermal generation. Okay, next is the solar thermal generation. So this solar thermal generation involves using the sun simply as a source of the heat and then this heat will be captured concentrated and used to drive a heat engine okay and then the heat engine may be a conventional steam turbine in which case uh, the heat will be used to generate steam but it could be a gas turbine or a sterling engine okay Okay, uh, instead of the advantages of this uh, solar technology, there is a major weakness of this system, which is it can only generate electricity when the sun is shining. Okay, so during night, during night time, there is no sunlight, so no electricity. So in order to overcome this problem, a solar power station must either have some form of conventional field backup or it must incorporate with the energy storage such as the batteries okay so solar cells frequently couple with rechargeable batteries in order to provide continuous power in remote locations and solar thermal power plants can also be designed with heat storage systems which allow them to supply power in the absence of the sun Okay, uh, first is the solar thermal power generation. Okay, uh, so we look on the first one is the uh, solar thermal power generation. So the, develop, the development of modern solar thermal power technology began in 1970s and was finally proved in the late of 1980s with a series of commercial solar thermal power plants in California. Okay. So modern solar thermal research has concentrated on three different approaches to converting the solar energy into electricity. We shall the first one is the parabolic through mirror ship uh, mirror through ship mirror, sorry. And then uh, we have the solar tower, and the third one is the solar dish. Okay, so the first one is the parabolic through ship mirror. The second one is the solar tower. And the third one is the solar dish. Okay, uh, the first one is the parabolic through shape mirror. 
So a parabolic trail is a type of solar thermal collector that is straight in one dimension and curved as a parabola in the other two, lined with a polished metal mirror. Okay, so this is the uh, figure of the uh, parabolic trail mirror shape. Okay, so um, the, the purpose of this parabolic trail shape mirror is to focus the energy contained in sunlight onto an energy collector at the focus of the parabola. So these parabolic through solar units can be deployed in a massive arrays to provide a larger, uh, a large generating capacity. So you can see here, uh, this one is the uh, massive arrays of the parabolic through shape mirror. Okay. So parabolic, uh, parabolic throughs use long reflecting throughs that focus uh, the sunlight onto a pipe located at the focal line. So you can see here, right? A fluid uh, circulating inside the pipe collects the energy and transfer it to the heat exchanger, okay, which produce steam to drive the turbine. So it will uh, produce steam here and drive the turbine. And also we drive the generator to produce the electricity. So largest parabolic through is located in the Mojave in California, uh, about 354 megawatt. Okay, uh, so you can watch the concentrating solar power plants, 1 megawatt to 5 megawatt videos from the Fresno Technology uh, after uh, this lecture. Okay. So the second one is a solar tower. So the solar power tower, also known as the central tower power plants or helostat power plants or power towers, is a type of solar furnace using a tower to receive the focused sunlight. So it employs a solar energy collector mounted atop a large tower. Okay. So uh, a field of mirrors is used, this one, okay. This one is the uh, solar energy collector. And then a field of uh, mirrors is used to direct sunlight onto the collector where the concentrated heat is used in a power generation system. Okay, uh, so this one, uh, this figure shows the early design uh, use this focus rays to heat water and then uh, use the resulting steam to power a turbine. Okay, this one. Okay, uh, newer designs using liquid sodium have been demonstrated and system using molten salts. 40% of potassium nitrate and 60% sodium nitrate as the working fluids are now in operation. So this one, uh, okay, this one is the newer designs. So these working fluids have high heat capacity which can be used to store the energy before using it to boil water to drive the turbines. These designs also allow power to be generated when the sun is not shining okay? because it has the uh, hot salt storage and also the cool, store, cool salt storage. Okay? So you can see uh, in details, watch the details of this uh, solar power, solar tower from this video. Okay, the third one is the solar dish. So the solar dish, uh, this is the figure of the solar dish. It comprises a parabolic dish with a solar heat engine mounted at its focus. So dishes are usually only 10 to 50 kilowatt in capacity but can achieve high energy conversion efficiency. So these generators are small mobile units that can be operated individually or in cluster in urban and remote locations. Okay, this is a figure of the solar dish uh, system. So dish or in these systems use a parabolic dish of mirrors. Okay, this is all. You can see here all this one is the mirrors. To direct and concentrate sunlight onto a central engine that produces electricity. The dish or engine system is a concentrating solar power or CSP technology okay, that produces smaller amounts of electricity than other CSP technologies. So this type of technologies are typically in the range of 3 to 25 kilowatts. Okay? 
So the, the two major parts of the system are the solar concentrator and the power conversion unit. So this is the solar, the dish, or the solar power, or the solar concentrator. Okay, this one is the same, dish or the solar uh, concentrator. Concentrator. Okay, and also this one. This one is the uh, the power conversion unit or the PCU. So the solar concentrator uh, or dish uh, will gather the solar energy coming directly from the sun. The resulting beam of concentrated sunlight is reflected onto a thermal receiver that collects the solar heat. So normally the solar the thermal receiver is uh, in the uh, PCU. So we have here is the uh, thermal. So thermal receiver in the power conversion unit okay the dish is mounted on a stru uh, structure that tracks the sun continuously throughout the day to reflect the highest percentage of sunlight possible onto the thermal receiver and the second unit uh, the second uh, main part is the uh, pcu or the power conversion unit so the power conversion unit includes the thermal receiver and the engine or the generator. The thermal receiver is the interface between the dish and the engine or generator. It will absorb the concentrated beams of solar energy. Then it will convert the energy to heat and transfer the heat to the engine or the generator. So um, normally a thermal receiver can be a bank of tubes with a cooling fluid, usually hydrogen or helium. That typically is the heat transfer medium and also the working fluid for the engine. So, uh, alternately, thermal receivers are heat pipes where the boiling and condensing of an intermediate uh, fluid transfer the heat to the engine. So, the engine or generator system is the subsystem that takes the heat from the thermal receiver and uses it to produce thermal to electric energy conversion. The most common type of heat engine used in dish or engine system is the Stirling engine. A Stirling engine uses the heated fluid to move pistons and create mechanical power. The mechanical power uh, in the form of the rotation of the engine's crown shaft drives a generator and produces electrical power. Okay, uh, next is the photovoltaic uh, devices. Okay, so this is the figure of the global PV install capacity. So worldwide growth of photovoltaics has been close to exponential between 2000 and 2012. So during this period of time, photovoltaics also known as a solar PV evolved from a niche market of small scale applications uh, to a mainstream electricity source. Okay, so here is the photovoltaic devices. So photovoltaics or PV, or commonly known as a solar cell, is a method of generating electrical power by converting solar radiation. Okay, so we have here is the is the solar radiation. Okay, into direct current electricity using semiconductors. This one is the semiconductors we have p uh, and type silicon um, that exhibit the photovoltaic effect solar cell is made from a thin layer of semiconducting material so it will absorb photons of radiation in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum okay so this one is the photon light so it will be absorbed by the semiconducting material so each photon of light energy is absorbed by an electron within the solid material. So in the solid material have the electrons. So it will absorb, uh, each of these uh, photon of light energy will be absorbed by this electron. So in absorbing the energy, the electron acquires an electrical potential. So this potential can be made available as electrical energy as an electric current. Okay. The current is produced at a specific fixed voltage called the cell voltage. The cell voltage is property of the semiconducting material 
and for silicon it is around 0 0.6 voltage okay the energy contained in light increases as the frequency increases from infrared through red to blue and ultraviolet light okay so this is the video of the how pv cells produce electricity uh, you can you can watch it later on okay so we look on to the solar cell for the working principle okay uh, this figure shows the working principle of the solar cell so the solar cell works in three steps okay the first one okay first one is the photons in the sunlight will hit the solar panel and are absorbed by the semiconductive materials such as silicons okay and then the second one principle is electrons uh, negatively charged are not loose from their atoms causing an electric potential difference then current uh, will start flowing through the material to cancel the potential and this electricity is captured due to the special composition of solar cells the electrons are allowed to move in a single direction and the third one is an array of solar cells converts solar energy into a usable amount of direct current or DC electricity okay so this also uh, shows the figures of the solar cell okay So next is the materials of the solar cell. Uh, the first one is the crystalline silicon. So this crystalline silicon is the most prevalent bulk material, also known as the solar grid. Okay. The second is the thin films. So sandwich between two panes of glass. So you can see here two glass to make a module. But this. Uh, these types of uh, solar cell have a lower conversion efficiencies. So there are four thin film technologies, which are the cadmium telluride, uh, copper indium gallium selenide, amorphous silicon, and disenitized solar cell. Okay. So next is the solar cell deployment. So you can see here the first one is the solar cell. Okay. And then um, the second one is the solar module, and the third one is the solar array. Okay, uh, so for the solar cell, the first one is the solar cell. Solar cell is a semiconductor device that can convert uh, solar energy into DC electricity uh, through the photovoltaic effect. Okay, and then uh, to increase their utility. Uh, the number a number of individual PV cells are interconnected together in a sealed weatherproof package called a panel or solar module. Okay, uh, for example, uh, a 12 volt panel module will have 36 cells connected in series, and a 24 volt uh, panel module will have 72 PV cells connected in series. That one is the solar module and then uh, the third one to achieve the desired voltage and current modules are wired in series and parallel into what is called a pv array okay the flexibility of the modular pv system allows designers to create a solar power systems that can meet a wide variety of electrical needs okay so this is the uh, PV modeling. Okay, uh, equivalent circuit models define the entire IV curve of a cell module or array as a continuous function for a given set of operating conditions. So one uh, basic equivalent circuit model in common use is the single uh, single diode model which is derived from the physical principles and represented by the following circuit for a single solar uh, cell, which is this one. Eh? Okay, this one is the solar cell module. 
And this is the IV characteristic curve that uh, is used for the PV modeling. Okay. Okay, uh, this figure shows the IV curve characteristic for different radiations level at 25 degrees Celsius for the multi-crystalline PV module. Okay, so basically, um, the radical characteristics of a photovoltaic array are summarized in the relationship between the output current and also the voltage. So you can see here, this is the uh, output current and also this one is the voltage. Okay. So the amount and intensity of solar irradiation, so you can see here, the solar irradiation, okay, um, we control the amount of the current, the output current I, and the operating temperature of the solar cells affects the output voltage V of the PV array, okay. Okay, uh, this is the electrical characteristics of 60 watt poly or multi-crystalline photovoltaic module uh, generally provided by the panels manufacturer okay so we can see here um, okay we look first onto the um, parameters of the open circuit voltage voc okay so open circuit voltage voc uh, is about 21.1 volts so this is the maximum voltage that the array provides uh, when the terminals are not connected to any load, which is an open circuit condition. So this value is much higher than VMP, which is the voltage at P max. You can see here. Okay. Uh, so VOC basically is larger than the VMP. Okay. So this value is much higher than VMP, which relates uh, to the operation of the PV array. Uh, which is fixed by the load. This value depends upon the number of PV panels connected together in series. Okay. Next one is the short circuit uh, current or ISC. The maximum current provided by the PV array when the output connectors are shorted together, which is a short circuit condition. So this value, okay, you can see here, 3.8 amps. Is much higher than IMP, the current at the P max IMP 3.5 amps, uh, which relates to the normal operating circuit current. And then uh, you also can see the maximum power, the maximum power here, P max or MPP, which stands to maximum power point. Okay, which is 60 watts. So this relates to the point where the power supplied by the array that is connected to the load batteries inverters is at its maximum value where MPP is equivalent to IMP times with voltage at P max V M P. Okay, so the maximum power point of a photovoltaic array is measured in watts, watt, or peak watts, WP. Okay, so you can see here from this uh, table, IMP is uh, 3.5 amps. Okay, you times with, uh, the voltage is 17.1 volt. Then you get around uh, 59.85 watt, which is a, approximately 60 watt. Okay. Okay, this one is the utility uh, photovoltaic arrays. Okay, so solar cell based power plant uh, with a generating capacity uh, which is similar to a fossil fuel power plant. So the construction of the utility photovoltaic arrays involve enormous number of individual solar cells mounted in solar panels and the solar panels themselves mounted in groups, each group having its own support structure. And this utility photovoltaic arrays uh, fitted with a system to track the sun across the sky and the cost for this uh, utility photovoltaic arrays are high.